every point of his career, Dalton Connect has been doubted, has been labeled not good enough, has had a limit set for him, and despite everything going against him, Dalton has broken through what should have been in possible because currently as a rookie Dalton is being given a very rare opportunity a meaningful role as a three-point scorer for a playoff roster that is not just a roster it is the bright lights of the Los Angeles Lakers but Dalton's journey to get here is like nothing we have ever seen just three years ago in 2021 Dalton was finishing up a season in junior college a year before that he was not even starting on that junior college team and as a high school freshman the now six foot six Dalton stood at just five foot four, which means we have to ask the question here. How did Dalton connect rise from a basketball nobody to an all American, the 17th pick in the NBA draft seemingly overnight and going forward? Why do hall of famers such as Charles Barkley believe Dalton has a lot more in the tank, a lot more upside in him. Chuck even said, letting the Lakers get Dalton connect was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. That's a bad boy right there. Dalton Connect, remember that name, y'all. Sounds like a YouTube title. What's up, Mike here? And as a senior in high school, Dalton Connect received zero Division I offers, even after scoring over 20 points per game. Many in life give up on their dreams at this point in the story, but as we dig into Dalton's mindset, we find that like many media called overnight successes, we actually have years of relentless hard work, years of putting up countless shots in empty gyms to fall back on as proof that Dalton always had one idea in mind. Even as a five foot four freshman, he had a singular goal to make the NBA. And as we know, he has achieved this. But normally when a player grows from five foot four to six foot six, we don't hear that he had a goal to make the NBA. We hear, I never expected this. I was supposed to be a dentist. In high school, NBA all-star Gordon Hayward was once a five foot 10 all-state tennis player. Then he grew to six foot seven, got recruited by Butler and almost beat Duke in the national championship with a half court shot that so they would hope that Zubek makes this not gonna try it's Hayward pulling it down getting around Zubek at midcourt launches the shot oh! just missed off the rim. At that point in time, the media hyped him as an accidental superstar because Gordon was on that tennis slash dentist path. Before his growth spurt, he really thought he had no chance of making the NBA, but Dalton, standing at five foot four, had the audacity to say otherwise. The reason for this is that Dalton's father, Corey, was not only a basketball player himself, but he also had a late growth spurt himself. Jumping up to the height of six foot three later on in his own high school, career, which meant even though he was just five foot four, Dalton and his dad went to work. But guys, before we continue, I'm very excited to say that this video is sponsored by SeatGeek, where the NFL season is in full swing and I want to be watching the games live and in person. And that is why our friends at SeatGeek have you covered. Everyone, not just new users, everyone can use my code, Mike10, for 10% off of any ticket on SeatGeek. Sports, festivals, concerts, you name it, SeatGeek has you covered as SeatGeek also rates tickets on a scale of one to 10. Green being good, red being bad so look for those green dots and no matter how many times you have bought tickets before again using code mike 10 is going to get you 10 percent off of your order so what are you waiting for open your SeatGeek app use my code mike 10 and get 10 percent off of your order right now because this offer is only available for a limited time that is code mike 10 for 10 percent off at SeatGeek. thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back into today's video in high school they would study tapes of steph curry and steve nash among other point guard greats in order to get a leg up on dalton progression as a basketball player and they also spent three plus hours every Saturday and every Sunday in the gym working. It is because of that work that now on the Lakers Dalton led all rookies in scoring in the preseason, has proven to be a valuable bench player already in the early start of the year, and has JJ Redick, an incredible shooter himself saying that Dalton is in the top 1% of shooters in the entire world. And really what he means is that rookie Dalton is already a top 1% shooter in the league a skill that any team wants, but going even further here, can Dalton give the Lakers an Austin Reeves type of impact or better? What is Dalton's ceiling? As you will see throughout the rest of Dalton's journey, everyone he comes into contact with says that he has the best work ethic they have seen. With that in mind, has anyone in NBA history gotten this late of a start age-wise and developed into an all-star or better? Yes, we have seen the Larry Birds and David Robinson types, the Wilt Chamberlain types even, older rookies 
who joined the league as grown men like Dalton and immediately stood out. But has there been a player who has put up Dalton's type of production, who took some time to develop and then immediately became an all-star or better? That would require the perfect storm of a late rise in skill or height and an unwavering belief in yourself. So it's here where I want us to take a trip to the University of Tennessee, where on January 16th, 2024, Dalton Connect is about to go from a relatively unknown to national star. Against the University of Florida, Connect began things with a statement putback dunk and was feeling himself early. Just three days ago, he had lit up Georgia for 36 points and connected on five threes in the process. Dalton knew his shot was there, but from the beginning of this game, what we saw was his basketball versatility on the offensive end. Another dunk, a tough finish around the rim, a turnaround jumper. This is a man who is knocked down from three, who has a turnaround jumper in his bag and flies to the rim for dunks. How he was ever overlooked is a giant question. In this game specifically though, the threes would start falling and against the University of Florida, Dalton had 39 points, making him the first SEC player since Shaq to record back-to-back 35-point -back games. Suddenly at Tennessee, here it was. The limit that everyone thought Dalton could reach and him shattering that limit and surpassing everyone's expectations. In the first 14 games of the college season last year, Dalton averaged just 15 one points per game, but then in his final 22 games against harder competition, as this was all the SEC, the SEC tournament, and the NCAA tournament, Dalton averaged over 10 more points a night with 25.9 points per game total on 41% shooting from deep as he made over three threes a night. This was not supposed to happen. As a senior in high school, Dalton was not even his conference's player of the year. He went to junior college because he received zero division one offers. He did not start right away at junior college and then averaged just 13.3 points per game in his first season there. But it is here where we need to hit the brakes, stop and notice a huge trend. Dalton takes one year to get settled in and then he stars. In his second year in junior college, he averaged 23.9 points per game and earned a scholarship to Northern Colorado, where in year one, Dalton averaged just 8.9 points per game, but then he again adjusted, put in the work. And in year two, he averaged 20.2 points per game and 7.2 rebounds, earning him a scholarship to Tennessee, where when the moment came, after years of hard work, he was ready. So while Dalton is currently averaging less than 10 points per game with the Lakers, the fact that he's here in general is already a remarkable achievement. And who is to say that his pattern of growing as a player is not going to continue? When Steve Nash was a 22-year-old rookie for the Phoenix Suns, he said his greatest achievement was not the Rookie of the Year award or an incredible game against one of his childhood heroes. No, Nash's biggest achievement in that rookie season was to earn 10.2 minutes per game of playing time. This was on a 40-win team, but Nash saw it differently. He was a man who improved every year. The fact that he earned 10 minutes a game with all-stars Kevin Johnson and a future Hall of Famer in Jason Kidd. Ahead of him in the depth chart is what was important to Nash. In season four, Steve Nash would still average just 8.6 points and 4.9 assists per game, but he improved each and every year. And then by the time he was 30, he won the first of his two MVPs. In the preseason, Dalton showed us flashes of what his ultimate upside might be. He led all rookies in scoring and in his final preseason game, he had a statement on TNT. Against the Suns, playing in a miniature version of the spotlight, Dalton scored the Lakers' final 20 points in a close game with his team needing baskets. In the final moments of this game, he's got the look. Number three. Got it. He's got the last 15 Laker points. 2.3 on the clock. Lakers ball. Connect in the corner. He's in yes. the machine. <laughs> Connect. Driving. Split mini up there. Oh, what down. Down. What a play giving him 35 points and eight three-pointers on the night. A glimpse of what is soon to come, possibly. I want to know what you think down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're not subscribed, no pressure, of course, but if you did like this video, it would mean a lot if you subscribed. If you are already subscribed, thank you for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. If you are still here, I think you are going to really like this video on the NBA's most impossible superstar. That is to the top left and to the top right is a video that YouTube is specifically recommending for you.